Welcome to the Regular Guy Firearms Channel. That means no biases. No sponsors. Hey! No ego. Fuck your tails! Here we're gonna separate the strong from the weak. And if you dislike the fact that we're bashing your firearm because you bought it and you invested your ego into it, click away. Daniel Defense M4 V9. Now, this is a mid-length gas system gun with a 16-inch barrel and a 15-inch handguard, free-floated, of course, what we've come to expect from Daniel Defense. Now, I'm going to bore you guys a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and give you basically the specs. So we'll go into things that I did to basically change things up on this rifle to suit it a little bit more for my needs. Okay. We will start on the lower receiver. The lower receiver is a mil spec type, slightly fared mag flared magazine well, and it comes with a QD uh, sling swivel. I have the Magpul ASP sling mount on here. Um, it is a CNC machine. Uh, with a uh, 7075 T6 type, hard coat anodized. The upper receiver is your is pretty much your mil spec uh, upper receiver with your M4 feed ramps, and it is also CNC machined 7075 T6 aluminum, hard coat anodized as well. The barrel which is actually a very nice accurate barrel is chrome lined vanadium steel cold hammer forged 1 7 twist 16 inch government profile barrel um, it is magnetic particle tested and it has a mil spec heavy phosphate coating your gas system is the pinned low profile gas block um, its materials are actually really good uh, quality steel itself. It's 4140 with also again the heavy phosphate coating. This is a direct impingement gas system gun so it works in a similar way that all of your standard M4s do. Your buffer is the H type. It actually doesn't come with a set of sights. I have my own flip ups on there and it comes with a Daniel Defense buttstock, but I'm using the Magpul MOE. You know, they also have their own pistol grip on there, but I went with Tango down on this. Um, now, let's also go over a couple of things too. A big thing that you have that ships with this rifle, and I don't really know if you can see this too terribly well. Um, it does. They it does come with rubber ladders which I think are fantastic because one of the first things that I think about when I know I'm going to be using a rifle for high volume shooting and this is my personal rifle is that I'm going to need some kind of heat shielding and the barrel itself it bleeds heat really well but I do want to guard my hands because when you do do enough shooting the materials get hot. Okay. Um, what's also kind of neat about it as well is that the 16 inch barrel that it comes with has their own Daniel Defense flash suppressor on there. And it got to focus. But it does its job really well. And 
I tell you what, as far as flash suppressors are concerned, this actually doesn't do too too terrible of a job. Also, with the impulse, the impulse itself is very smooth. Just the slightest popping that you would feel from it when uh, during the recoil impulse. So it's not quite as smooth as something like a PWS brake or anything like that. But that's not what it was designed for. So honestly, it's one of the better ones out there. Also, the night signature is way, way, way reduced. I mean, way reduced. Much better than your standard birdcage types. So, in all honesty, it does its job really well. Okay. Um, the handguard itself doesn't like to keep heat. And yes, it'll heat up just like most other free float handguard types, but honestly, it bleeds the heat off real quick. I mean, I could put five to eight magazines through this thing fairly quickly and within 10 to 15 minutes it's cooled back down so that's a big plus um, so a, a hit that I do have on this on these particular handguards and yes I chose them and yes I do harp on this a lot but I decided to get this anyway was that the rail sections are the older style meaning they're full length rail systems and everything else the extra weight I'll admit I don't need but at the same time it does serve its purpose in that anything that I need to mount goes on there and it goes on snug too some 1913 rail sections from like your budget AR companies and stuff will actually it, it unless you really really torque it down a lot of stuff tends to move forward and to the rear forward or to the rear or both on you and honestly this has none of that. It, it is actually kind of a pain in the ass mounting things to this because it's very exacting and things that go on it like the like the D-ball that I have on here or the light that I have mounted or even the AFG they fit very tight to the point where it's kind of a pain in the ass. For instance sliding this guy on was a, it required more effort than I really thought it was going to. It fit on there very very tightly so as far as mounting things that's a pain but as far as knowing that they're secure and knowing I need a drop of Loctite and nothing's coming off of this rail system ever is a really good plus um, something else that I noticed was that the ventilation on this thing and this is probably the reason why these handguards bleed heat so effectively is that this thing is Swiss cheesed with vent holes for airflow and it is throughout the handguard and I think it's superb there's no additional heat shielding on here which I find slightly disappointing but then again it was designed properly to shed as much heat as it could quickly so although additional heat shielding is not present I'm not too bummed out about it what's real nice about it also is that like most uh, modular handguards that are out there your 12 o'clock is your 12 o'clock rail is 100% monolithic and it locks up 100% to the upper receiver so that in its own right is a big deal because there are a lot of AR manufacturers out there that cost less but those two won't sync up so doing pretty much what I'm doing as far as bolting this and having different sections of it um, between the upper and lower receivers is not that big of a deal to me. Now on a red dot like an EOTech this is a non-issue but when I decided to put magnification on here like for instance I, I own a 1 to 6 scope from, uh, from Loophole. I slung that thing on there and of course you have two different mounting points and I threw it, from, and I threw it on um, the more forward section to it because my length of pull is real short on a rifle like this and I gotta tell you there were no issues whatsoever with any type of accuracy um, as far as POI shifts or anything like that because like I said in some of the cheaper guns with the cheaper rail systems this has a tendency to shift ever so slightly when you're shooting a thing. So you'll get point of impact shifts and that can kind of drive you nuts if you're trying to do if you're trying to do things like long distance shooting or 
reactive shooting, which means medium range engagements on steel, then have you speed up some. So this is actually quite nice in that it syncs up perfect with the upper receiver and I don't have any issues whatsoever. And the fact that it's a, a true free float rail system is great. Something else that I noticed as well is that they changed a couple of things on these rail systems. Danube Defense rail sections used to have six screws. They improved the way that these things bolt on and basically removed two screws, so now it's just the four. Honestly, one, the tiny, tiny, tiny amount of weight that you reduce from that is a help because if you're in a class all day sporting body armor or if you happen to sling this thing on your rifle and carry it around in Afghanistan because I have seen dudes put on uh, their own upper receivers to their weapon systems the tiniest amount of weight that you can shed helps and that's one and two not having to worry about two different screws trying to back out on you it's just a little bit less work that you have to do, so I'm very intrigued by that. Okay, now the rest of this rifle, honestly, it, it, it's not too terribly special because it, it is a mil-spec rifle, a properly done mil-spec rifle in that on your bolt carrier, the staking was properly done. Okay, I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. See now, this is just beautiful to me, because the staking here was done evenly on this bolt carrier. And if you don't know what I mean as far as staking, it's just these little imprints alongside of the screws, and it's to keep them from backing out. Okay. Now, again, not many high do I'm sorry, lower dollar AR companies do this properly. I have seen before to where some are just barely even tapped in there at all. And another really nice thing about this bolt is that it is a, is that this is a M4 profiled bolt or a M16 profiled bolt, meaning this section of your bolt carrier here isn't cut out halfway. It goes the full is is basically the standard cut. So that helps in a huge way, mainly because, one, it extends the life of the bolt a little bit by reducing the, uh, the speed at which the bolt runs to the rear. And number two, it, it honestly, it's nice to have good equipment running in your go-to rifle. I did actually encounter a couple of malfunctions. One, I didn't manage to get on camera because I just decided that I wasn't going to bring a camera out that day when I was going to zero it. But I did catch the second one. Oh, malfunction number one. See, my theory on this is that because I principally use Wolf ammunition and because this is a mid-length, not a carbine-length gas system, some of the loads, and I can tell just on the impulse every once in a while, on Wolf ammunition are pretty light. I mean, much lighter than normal, and it's already a soft recoiling round in the first place. And what I think happened is that especially when this rifle was brand new I had those two stoppages and both of those were that same malfunction so maybe I'm just thinking the coatings are are, are still brand new there hasn't been much oil thrown through the gun or grease for that matter because I principally used that in the first place it just did not have enough ass to run that bolt all the way. Now, in most other cases, the rifle runs exactly like this. Fight! Break one. 
But because I had those two malfunctions, I figured that it was worth it at the very least to note them. Because out of the about 4,000 rifles that I put, 4,000 rifles, 4,000 rounds that I put through this gun, those were the only two stoppages, and it was within the first couple hundred rounds. So honestly, I let it go. Overall, though, guys, like I said, this thing is well designed and designed to work to the point where, honestly, it's just kind of boring. You know, if I showed up to every last one of my YouTube videos and I shot this one and all of them, nobody would watch it because they know that this rifle works. And come on, guys, we've seen the videos of Daniel Defense online and stuff like that. It's actually what drove me to buy this rifle. Daniel Defense knows what they're doing, you know, and in my personal opinion, they're highly unsung because you hear constantly about Knight's Armament and LWRC and all these other wonder companies, but this is one of the very few M forgeries that you can get where the rifle is built exactly to military specs, and that, don't get it twisted, military specs aren't the greatest thing in the world. But military specs are designed to work all the time. You know, it's not going to be the most accurate rifle in the world. That's why I put a Geisley trigger in it, to help me out a little bit. It's not going to be an unstoppable death machine of a reliable rifle, although it has been for the most part. It's just one of those guns that I can pick up and that I know is going to work and that I know is going to shoot straight with boring regularity, as I've said a few times in the past. The biggest thing that, honestly, that I can take away from this, however, is the mid-length gas system. I mentioned it before to where when it was brand new, I had a pair of those malfunctions because the bolt was, didn't quite cycle all the way. This de in this department, this is where this gun starts to go away from other M forgeries that are out there because that is pretty much the, the two proprietary parts that are in this gun are the barrel and the gas system. Not so proprietary in that you can't get them anywhere because there are a bunch of people that do mid-length guns like BCM and a few others, but I tell you what, Coming off of mostly carbine length guns, I gotta tell you, the impulse change is pretty much so much more soft than 5.56 is, and 5.56 is already a really soft shooting round. The impulse is so much lighter, and noticeably lighter, and noticeably smoother that as far as personally owned rifles, I'll never really go back to a carbine length gas system. It really does change your life. It's fucking crazy. But honestly, there isn't much more that I can speak of on this rifle. So I'm going to end this with some shoot footage. And remember, guys, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Two